How much hope does the international peace negotiator offer for Syria? This week's guest on the interview, the UN Arab League deputy for Syria, Nasser Al-Kidwa. Nasser Al-Kidwa, you are Kofi Annan's uh, deputy now on the United Nations and Arab League sponsored peace mission to Syria. And uh, Kofi Annan has described in his profound concern that the violence in Syria is escalating into civil war. Do you share that profound concern? Well, I don't think that he said that. Actually, he has profound concern that if the parties do not seize the opportunity given by Anand's mission, then the country might descend into a civil war, a horrible potential that we all must avoid. It's interesting that you say that, because if it's not a civil war at the moment, what is it in your definition? I'd be, I'd be curious to know. It is a, it is a uh, bad situation. Sometimes it does deteriorate, sometimes it, it gets better. There is no straight line, straight line there, although if we are to uh, look at the more recent period, we would note uh, a reduction in the intensity of violence, a reduction in the use of, of, arm, of, heavy, uh, of heavy arms, a reduction also in, let's say, uh, indiscriminate shelling uh, against mm -hmm. populated centers. Unfortunately, on the other hand, there is increase in attacks using small weapons and more generally an increase in the humanitarian needs, uh, something that I think the international community must do its, its best to respond to very quickly. But Nasser al with this bad situation, as you call it, has been going on now for 14 months and has cost anything up to eight, nine, ten thousand 10,000 lives, depending on who you listen to. Certainly urgency is now required in terms of diplomatic efforts. What is going to take place next in terms of those urgent diplomatic efforts? Is Kofi Annan going to be going to Damascus in the near future? Before that, let's go, let's go back a little bit. Uh, it has been 14, 14 months, but let's remember that the mission of Kofi Annan has just started more recently. I mean, we are talking about two, two months, two and a half months. So uh, it's not like uh, this mission has been there during all this time and suddenly we are impatient with the situation. And, and secondly, uh, uh, in a very logical manner, the, the mission, Mr. Anan uh, proposed an initial six-point plan, uh, basically aimed at uh, re ending the violence, ending the bloodshed, ending the violence along with it, uh, and of course achieving certain important uh, elements, aspects related to human rights and, and related to the living conditions of the population. Then uh, we will get into the political, political process that is mentioned of course in the first point of the plan, of the six point plan. So uh, to answer your question, uh, indeed Mr. Anan will be going back to Damascus to follow up on the situation, to uh, discuss with, uh, uh, with the government uh, at all levels as well as uh, other, other Syrian groups as well. And is Kofi Annan optimistic ahead of that mission? I think we cannot but be optimistic given the difficulty of the situation and the ugliness of uh, things that have been happening. We must uh, maintain faith and, and, and keep a degree of optimism. Okay, and Kofi Annan's uh, peace mission to Syria has, as you have pointed out, been relatively short-lived. But the crisis has been going on for a long time, and a lot of people outside the, the, the UN bubble, they, they're, they're fearing that it has already descended into a civil war. Indeed, the, uh, the Turkish leader, for example, Tayyip Recep Erdogan, as you well know, he says, he says, and I'm quoting here, he's lost hope in the Kofi Annan plan. When you and Kofi Annan are sitting together, do you have a plan B? A lot of people say you don't. Let's, before, before talking about plan B, let's talk about plan A. I mean, even those people for whom we have high, high respect, of course, if you ask them, uh, does this mean that we should give up on, on, on the mission and try something else, probably you would hear no as an answer. So in, in other words, all parties uh, want this mission to continue, think that it's very important for it to succeed and think that this is the last, the last chance. So as such, we are, we are proceedings. Of course, we understand 
the frustration of, of many parties, first and foremost the, the Syrian people. I mean, after all, uh, when, we, when we came, when Mr. Anan came, it has been already a very complicated situation. There has been a lot of uh, bloodshed to the point of causing all kinds of unimaginable problems, of course. Uh, so uh, we are doing our best. And uh, the first thing first, we must achieve complete cessation of violence in all its forms. We must achieve serious implementation, serious progress on the implementation of the rest of the six-point plan. Is Bashar al-Assad part of the problem or part of the solution? This will be something to be decided by the Syrian people, not by me or by the office of the Joint Special. Election. But you would have to concede that, that huge sections of the Syrian population uh, are full of anger and resentment and hatred I after all that has happened. I understand that. They are not going to negotiate with Bashar al-Assad and he has shown no indication that he is willing to negotiate with the, the serious opposition groups. I understand that and this is precisely the challenge. The, the first point of the six-point plan speaks of a political process uh, including through a political dialogue with the, between the government and a whole range of Syrian opposition. It also uh, commits the government to uh, appoint uh, uh, empowered interlocutor to participate in this uh, political uh, dialogue and we intend to, to proceed uh, accordingly. We understand the difficulties, we understand the positions of both, si of both sides, however uh, uh, we will do our part and uh, we will of course keep in mind that the future of Syria will be decided by the Syrian people. In patience, uh, patience is your job, you are a diplomat of course, but many in the international community are growing impatient. You are very well aware of the fact that the Saudis, the Qataris and not least the uh, Washington, they're beginning to say that we have a moral duty to intervene. We intervened in Libya, why should we not intervene in Syria? I've got to repeat the figure, maybe 10,000 people have been killed and we're sitting on our hands. That you have to ask them. Now. But you're the hope, came, you're the hope of the came, world. You and Kofi Annan are the hope we, of the no, world. No, you were talking about intervention. Why they didn't intervene, you ask them. We came in light of the fact that there is no intervention and that luckily uh, most parties want a peaceful solution of a very complicated problem that's very difficult to solve. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we, as I said, will do, uh, will do our best. We are patient, dealing with very impatient situation that, that causes everybody to be very angry, very upset, very sad. Uh, I can tell you that, that we, feel, we feel the same. It doesn't make us happy to speak of a reduction of the level of violence, for instance, because a loss of one life is good enough for you to lose, uh, to lose sleep. But that's, that's a different matter. We need to focus on our job, on doing what we uh, ought to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Kofi Annan has also, when he's been talking, when he's been giving very recently his assessment of the situation in Syria, he said the following. He said that if, if there is a failure to prevent civil war in Syria, that will not only affect Syria, it will also have an impact on the whole region. How much do you fear that and can you describe what kind of impact it could have? It's very real. Look at the refugee problem alone. How many thousands of refugees have already moved into, let's say, Turkish territory, uh, Lebanese territory, Jordanian territory? you might end up with a flood of refugees. That alone could represent a, a, big, a big problem, of course. You, you have all kinds of problems that could result of uh, a, a situation of a country that has such geopolitical uh, importance and, and, and such a complex kind of, of structure of society. So it is, it is indeed uh, very important and uh, the, the fear of uh, having, having uh, this crisis uh, to, 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 to have a spreading impact in the region is a very real one. 
And this is, this is something where you really know what you're talking about because you are a former Palestinian Authority foreign minister, you're a nephew of Yasser Arafat, you're a seasoned Palestinian diplomat, and you know that this can spill over into what is a very, very volatile part of the world. Indeed, and I'm proud of all of the above. However, I'm sitting here with you uh, wearing a different hat. But what can you bring to the table, you personally? You've been giving me your sort of general assessment of, uh, of your patient diplomacy. But, yeah, but what, what Arabic can you... flavor. Arabic Sorry? flavor. Arabic flavor. And tell me, <laughs> what, what is the Arabic flavor in, in this? Hey, tell Listen, me, what do you this mean is, with that? This is, this, is an Arab, uh, this is an Arab problem. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. it, will, it will take a solution with Arab character, I, I, I believe. And I think uh, Arab are probably uh, understand the situation a little bit more. That's that's only uh, that's only natural. But of course, we need also the international wisdom, and, and we need the efforts of the whole international community. Where is Syria going to be in a year's time? Hopefully, in a much better situation. Uh, the, the Europeans are haunted by the memory of Srebrenica, also outside Europe by the Rwandan genocide. Um, and we, we always said we would not look on and let it happen, and we are looking on and letting it happen, aren't we? Well, I don't blame anybody that, that feel uh, that strongly at what's happening uh, in, in, in Syria. Luckily, it's not, uh, it's not Rwanda, at least not yet, and luckily, it will never, uh, hopefully, it will never, get, uh, it will never get to that. Uh, having said that, allow me to repeat again, this doesn't make me happy that the situation is only as bad. It makes me actually very sad and, and very worried. And that's why precisely we are trying to do what we are trying to do. Nasser Al-Kidwa, I wish you all the best on your peace mission to Syria. Thank you. Thank you.